Hi everyone and welcome back to another iRacing video on my channel and today it's more of a tutorial video as we take a look at how to manipulate the spec maps in GIMP to get different paint effects onto our cars in iRacing. So I was chatting to a couple of guys a couple of weeks ago and I made the bold claim that whilst I'm definitely no graphic designer and in fact my designs are pretty poor, um, I feel like I do actually have quite a good understanding of the spec maps, how to use them and how to kind of get the effect that I want out of the spec maps. So. Enough talking from me, hide my face, we'll go full screen and we'll jump straight into it. Alright, so first things first, I've just grabbed a random car net from um, from off iRacing. So this is the Lucas Oil Pro 2 design. Um, so there are a couple of ways to be able to preview the paint design that you're working on. First is to go into your iRacing, go into my content and into cars, find the car that you're working on, which for me is this Lucas Oil Pro Light car. And then when you view car, car model, Got a nice preview there of what you're working on. Now this is quite a good way of doing it. You can zoom in, you can get a nice close-up of what you're doing and all that sort of stuff. But what I found is it's not quite as versatile as what I'd like it to be. So the other thing you can do is just to jump into a quick session, just into a test drive. Already got the car selected. And I just like to find a nice short track that I know is not going to take very long to load. And Try and get the middle of the day when the sun is going to be nice and high in the sky. Um, that's probably be uh, sometime in summer as well, to be fair. Just so that the light is bouncing off the car a little bit better than if you were, sort of if it was sunset time. And those orange hues that come with the sunset are going to make the whole paint design sort of, it's going to confuse your eye, if that makes sense. It's not going to be very accurate. So jump into a test drive and then we'll be able to preview the car as we're working on it a little bit better. So while that loads up, we'll uh, just chuck a quick design onto this car, I guess. So just for reference sake, let's just paint this car orange. Now, to be able to preview what you're working on as you're working on it, what you want to do is export this file into iRacing's paint folder. So the shortcut for that in GIMP is Control, Shift and E. I'm already in the folder there, but in your documents, there'll be iRacing, Paint, Again, find the car that you're looking for, which will be on a different name probably to what you're expecting. So for example, I know the Skip Barber is actually this RT2000. Um, so you might just have to look around a little bit to find the car you're looking for. So whereas the car in iRacing is called the Lucas Oil Pro Trucks, in here it's just the Pro Trucks. So jump into that folder and then save this first, the actual paint design. It's car underscore and then your iRacing number. So for me, that's 607856. TGA. Export that. Get the compression dialog, so export. And now you're ready to have a look at what this orange paint scheme looks like in the car. So we'll jump back onto iRacing. Close my overlays so they're not being annoying through this uh, tutorial. Alright, so I'm into the car. So what you want to do is just, just drive basically. Just make sure that your driver is in the car. So I just come out of pit road and then I'll just pull it up and stop there. Jump back out of the car and then have a quick look at the replay. So, there we are. Come out of the pits, my driver is in the car, and that's an important bit because I believe that the paint scheme is actually attached to the driver. So if you were just sitting in pit lane with an empty car, you wouldn't be able to preview the paint. So let's just jump back to that replay. So now that I'm out there, Control and R will refresh the paint. So what iRacing has done is it's looked for that folder where we've just saved the paint file and if there's something in there, it'll put it on the car. If there's not something in there, it'll probably just stay as default to be fair. But the reason I like to do it like this is because if you um, go into the camera editor, spacebar to clear it all away. Now you've got a much better, um, more versatile, you can really zoom in to different, uh, different areas of the car. And you can really get a good look at how the paint's actually coming onto your car. So, like we said, I'm definitely no uh, graphic designer. I'm <laughs> pretty poor at the paint designs themselves. So I'm just going to leave that car orange for now. And now we'll jump into the spec maps themselves. So when you're doing the spec map, you want to make sure that your paint layer is completely turned off so it's not visible let's do that now and what you might find is when you're working on the spec map you still might want the wire guide so I'm just going to move that above the spec map folder and we'll 
open up the spec map and have a look at what's inside. While I'm there, let me turn my wire mask on so then I can collapse that folder and just get everything all at once. So inside the spec map here, we've got the red channel, which is the metallic, metallic channel. We've got the green channel, which is the roughness channel. And what these values or what, what this layer is wanting is a value from black through to red. And the more red it is, the more metallic that layer is. It's the same but opposite for green. So if you want it in a metallic, you'll actually want no roughness whatsoever because this green channel at its maximum value is ma asking for maximum roughness. So if you think of these layers as being maximums, when it's a red, it's me very metallic. And when it's green, it's very rough. So just to show you what that looks like, let's grab red as it comes, throw it onto this red layer, paint her up, and now it's ready to export. Now, again, as always, when you're doing your paint, unless you want to see the wires, um, if you were trying to line something up very precisely, you're going to want to turn those, uh, those masks off before you export. So same shortcut. But this time I'm going to control shift and export so that I don't just write over the top. All right. If you're not wanting the shortcuts, just go file. And the reason why we're shifting is because we're exporting as if we've just gone control E again, then we'd have exported over the top of the paint file, which we don't want to do Because this time. And after the underscore, we're just going to write spec Then another underscore. So now we've got car spec 607856 and export that. Now for some reason on this car, I'm always going to get this this um, error message. It's going to be annoying, but it is what it is. Export as before. And now control R to refresh the paint scheme. Now look what it's done to the car. Now we've got this orange chrome metallic -y kind of effect. So what's happening here is iRacing is reading the original paint file, the orange car, and then it's reading the spec map file. And because we've said full red metallic, no roughness, it said, cool, I can do that. Here is a nice shiny car, right? So I know a lot of people, it's very uh, popular at the minute, are wanting chrome cars. So you can see from the uh, sort of from the, the logo, from the decal here on the car, this general tire logo is white on the paint file. So white, when you cover it in metallic, goes up like a mirror. It shows up as chrome. Then with the numbers, those numbers are actually painted white on the paint file. Now the chrome, and you can even see that on these numbers on the outside there, look. A nice shiny mirror, mirror finish on the car number. So. Whilst I was lining up for this um, for this tutorial and making sure that I did know as much as I thought I knew, which uh, disclaimer, I absolutely didn't. So this has been a good learning curve for me as well. I thought to myself, right, cool. But now what if I want a blend? So I want a little bit of roughness adding on to the roughness channel. So you think, well, fair enough. Let's uh, let's go to the green layer. Let's paint it green. And you think, cool, I'm sorted. So when I do this and export it again, I'm going to get now get a semi rough metallic effect. You refresh it and it hasn't changed. Nothing's done any different. So I spent ages scratching my head here. How would you multiply the effects and sort of tone down the effects? So there's a couple of ways of doing it, really. The first thing is keep these layers separate like they are right now, and you have to try and blend them using opacity. So now if I reduce the opacity of the red layer, that's not necessarily saying I want it to be any less metallic, but what it's doing is it's letting some of the green layer show through. So remember, this is the file that we're exporting. This is the layer that will be shown on the car. Before, when this layer was fully red, the overall layer is just red. So all that is receiving is just full metallic. That's why when we just refreshed it, nothing changed. So if we do want some roughness to show through, we need to put some opacity through this red layer so that some of the green shows through. So now when I export that and refresh it, 
now that complete mirror f finish has gone, it's not anywhere near as extreme as what it was. What we've sort of got now is kind of a, a metal sheen kind of effect. See how it's still shiny, but it's also quite rough. So we'll jump back into the paint file and see what else we can do. So the more, the more opacity you give to this red layer, the more green will show through. And so the more matte it will end up looking. So if you basically, if you make that, um, that metallic paint layer completely see-through and export it, you're going to get a fully rough layer, which in simple English means you're going to get a matte paint effect. So before we had that little bit of a um, sort of a metal shine in the paintwork. Now it's just completely matte. You'll see there's no sun reflecting out of that whatsoever. Still got the shadows and you still got the sun shining on it, of course, but there's no actual reflections. So personally, this is actually one of my favorite um, kind of spec map designs. I, I really like the matte effect um, on my cars. So my designs are generally pretty easy because I'll just put some boring paint on it, throw a matte spec map, and then I'm done. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to experiment and see what else we can do. So what I've sort of found when I've been doing these experiments ready for this video is that it's actually better or it's easier, in my opinion, is with this metallic layer, it's actually to merge it together. Do the same with the green channel, with the roughness channel, and then merge that down so that now I've got one layer which is doing both kind of elements of my spec map. So now, just by changing one layer, I will be able to change the spec map of the whole car. So let me show you what I mean. So our layer is back to being red. If I export that, we already know what paint effect we're gonna get. We're back to our metallic again. All right, same, same, but in the opposite way. If I now paint this completely green once more and export that, then we should get our completely rough channel back again, which we have. We've gone back to matte again. So now what I found is rather than trying to blend the layers together and working with the opacity, now I can just influence the colors individually, which I think is actually a bit of an easier way to do it. And I've found some interesting paint effects by being able to do this. So what we're basically looking at is this red slider and this green slider. Now I remember watching a tutorial that says, Go to 255, it's always going to give you more control because you've got sort of more, more digits, two and a half times more digits to use. But in the, um, in the realm of kind of blending these layers together, I'm going to keep it on 100 just because then I know that in the middle, a straight 50 is going to be half as much. So, if I paint this orange, this is saying a completely full metallic layer with half of the roughness. Export that. So when we were blending the layers, we got this kind of metal sheen effect, this kind of metal flake effect, but it wasn't as strong as this. And I think that's something to do with the way that the spec map file is reading the, uh, the opacity on the layer. I think it doesn't give it as much metal, metal flake as what this has done now. So. This, in my opinion, is a really cool looking car. It's not metallic, it's not got that sort of, what's coming to be quite an overused chrome effect in iRacing, but it still does shine, it really twinkles in the sun. So what's, what we're gonna do with this is basically look at the colors and see what it does. So with this blended layer, orange gives you that super cool metal flake effect. We know that red, gives us full metallic and green gives us a matte layer. So now the other way around. So orange is what we had before. Now we've got this kind of sort of like a lime green kind of color. All right. So let's paint that on. Export it. Refresh it. And you think, well, hang on, it's just half and half again. Shouldn't it just be the same? But it's not. What it's done is given you an overall matte finish but it's given just a little bit of reflectivity to it. So it's not very much, quite hard to see it whatsoever. But again, in my opinion, this way of working with the layers 
now makes it a lot more um, tweakable, a lot more versatile for getting the effect that you want. So if I say, yeah, that's cool, but I want a little bit more, uh, a little bit more metallic. So this kind of yellow color, and we refresh it. What we actually get is not the result that you'd expect. We haven't just got a more shiny car. Now, again, I'm not going to pretend to fully understand why this is, but if we keep cranking that up, if we go for fully rough and fully metallic, and export that, so now our, our color of the main um, layer is yellow, and we refresh that, we don't get a fully rough, fully metallic look, or maybe we do, but what it means is it's not reflecting the sunlight because the car is so rough. We've kind of got this like dull, unreflective car, and you can see the difference there in the color of the car versus the color of these radiators at the back. You see how shiny they are? Versus nothing on the car itself. So that one's a little bit of a confusion for me. I don't... I don't fully understand why that happens, um, although I guess you consider a material, or if you try and think of a material that is metallic, but also very, very rough, I can't really think of anything that fits that bill. So maybe the problem with this colour, this yellow colour out of GIMP, is that this material doesn't really exist, and so it doesn't really know what to do with it. I'm not sure. But for now, let's jump back over to GIMP and see what other colours we can come up with. So. Let's do a blend of half and half. So before we were looking at what happens if we've got a, um, a matte layer, so fully green, and then add a bit of reflectivity to it. And what we tried to do was add the metallic, and that didn't work. That just put both the values at full and got that weird matte color that we've just been looking at, that dark matte color. So remember, this green layer is the roughness, and right now we're fully rough. And what we want to do is add sort of reflectivity to it. So if you think of the difference between a wooden table and a sticker. So a wooden table is very rough. So we can think of a table as being like 100%, whereas a sticker is really smooth. So if we're wanting to add a little bit of shininess into it, a bit like a sticker, rather than trying to add the metallic, the reflectivity layer, let's actually try and take some smoothness or some roughness, sorry, Let's take some roughness out of the layer. Let's paint that on and export it. Back to the car to refresh. And now we've started to get a matte layer, which has just got a little bit of reflectivity in it, like we were wanting. Now this isn't quite the same as the metallic layer with a little bit of roughness added to it. <laughs> little pause there as my brain tries to figure out the words to describe what's going on. So remember that, that colour was orange, so we can see that really quick. If we put this back to uh, halfway and add the red. So this is the difference in colour between what we've just painted, which is this sort of matte with a bit of shine, versus what we're going to go for, which will be kind of shine with a little bit of matte. So export that. Now if we refresh, So it's almost like the layers are doing the same thing, but it's not quite. So this is shine with a bit of rough, and the other was rough with a little bit of shine. You see the effect is definitely different there. So if we put them then at half and half, this should then be a slightly more shiny, rough car than what we were just looking at uh, just before this one. And yeah, same thing. You can still see the matte effect of the car, but it's just got a little bit of a shine in it now. So incidentally as well though, this is not the default kind of spec map that iRacing puts on. So if you're ever wanting to just do the default i.e. just leave an area completely unaffected and do what iRacing would put on as default. What you want to do is paint that layer black. So not transparent. What I found with the transparent is it just sort of makes a, a, a black, black, blacker than black can be kind of layer. 
Um, so, just to show you what I mean, let's uh, let's paint a stripe down the car so you can see the difference. So I'll turn that wire map on. I'll just sort of try and line it up down the middle of the car there. Here's my brush. Paint that black. Turn the wires off again and export. Now when we refresh. So what we had before was matte with a little bit of shine on it. And then this stripe that we just painted is the iRacing default. So you can see there's definitely more kind of shine to that. It's the car almost looks like a sticker now. So this is the default that it puts onto the cars. So if you remember, that's how the layers were when we first jumped into them. Both of these layers were just plain black. And so that just gives it the iRacing default. All right. Now, you don't want to just turn off these layers, because what that will do is it'll turn them both transparent. And then it gives it sort of a really weird effect in iRacing. It's sort of saying that the metallic is transparent and the matte is also transparent. And so it gives you this really sort of matte design, which if I remember correctly, is the same as when we had both the metallic and the roughness turned up to full. So, bit of a weird, it's kind of neither here nor there, it's almost like both layers are doing nothing. And so you just end up with this unreflective, un... it's just a really weird colour. So, if you want in the default iRacing values, then paint it black rather than transparent. And here you are back to a default car. Now the reason I'm mentioning this is, of course, say for example these uh, these numbers up here, you might want those to be stand the standard eye racing colour because they're kind of a, a normal consistent, if you like. You had a car that was racing professionally or whatever, or you've seen it on the TV. Yeah, the paint jobs are wacky and wonderful, and they do all sorts, but the numbers tend to be like a standard. So, for example, monster liveries tend to be that matte black colour. But the numbers still tend to be sort of the standard of whatever series they're racing in. So to start going through that and how I would go about um, separating those out, I'm just going to open up, or I'm going to close this one, this version of GIMP, just because it's, um, it's sort of too far gone with what I've been showing. I'm just going to reopen the default once more. So let's discard those changes and open up the um, the original file once again. So here we are. So first things first, let's just resave this this card default. So iRacing paint find the pro trucks and because it's there from earlier, I can just click it this time. I'm exporting. So this is just my um, my default paint scheme once again. So I'll load that back in. And there we are, we're back to blue. And just to kind of sort of validate what I was saying about the spec map there, if I just go, um, it's just on my second monitor so you can't see it, but I'll just go into the spec map folder again. And I'm just going to delete the spec map for this car. So we're almost sort of resetting. We're back to uh, we're back to where we started. So I've just deleted the spec map, and now if I refresh, you see that car is on its default value there. So black in the spec map layer is the default color. Now there's a little bit of a difference here because this black bumper down here. Is, uh, has now got the same shininess, and that's just because when I was painting in the layers, I've um, painted over sort of a, a default colour, if that makes sense, or a default part. So, let's get down to the nitty gritty of it. So, let's go back to that orange, just because it looked like quite a nice car for me to um, have to look at while I'm doing this. So the car is back to be an orange. We're saving as the car, so we're exporting as the car. The spec maps are still deleted from before, so now we um, 
Refresh the paint scheme, here's our orange car back once again. So in my opinion, the quickest and easiest ways of making some default colors and stickers and things like that still be default whilst the spec map of the paint stays in the spec map is to sort of go backwards and forwards between the paint layer and the spec map layer. So what we'll do to begin with is just export the spec map so that we've got it. And for demonstrative purposes, let's make a fully red metallic car. So I said about blending layers, I'm not going to do that just because what I'm doing is a very simple spec map. So if I was doing something more complicated, that is when I would split the layers out. Now I've just done that big mistake, I forgot to um, save as or export as, so I've actually just turned our car red. <laughs> So I'll need to undo that or uh, resave over the top. Now we should have our orange car back. There we go. And we'll go back to the spec map. Paint it red. And export as this time. So car underscore spec underscore. Not sure if the capitals matter, so I'll change it just in case. Export that. And now we should have our orange metallic back again. So what I'm wanting with this design or what I'm not wanting with this design is I don't want this general tire logos to be metallic and I don't want these numbers on the back to be metallic. Now I've only got the standard version of trading paints which means it's quite difficult for me to edit the number individually that sort of comes with the uh, the trading paints upgrade. So the way I tend to get around that is I'll just take for example I'll maybe paint a strip down the middle of the roof here that is a default colour so that that gets the default sticker texture on the number no matter what the number is. So a lot of paints that you might see will have their custom number actually painted into the paint itself. For example, I'll just turn the wire on so I know where I'm working. If I just crudely write a Number two, onto the middle, brush is too big, <laughs> onto the middle of the roof, and then export that to the car. This is the problem that you get sometimes, is that iRacing will stamp the number over the top of the number that you've painted on your car. So you get around that by having the trading paints upgrade. I don't have that, so I have to find a workaround. So what I might do in this instance is we'll select where we know roughly that number is. And we can use the wire guide to help us. So it's kind of in the, the middle third of the roof there, so. And trust me when I say this is probably not going to look very good, which is why Good paints take a lot of work. All right, so now if we go back to our metallic paint layer and go back to painting that black again. Just exported that as a car again rather than as a spec map. I've also left the wires turned on, so let's export that now. And then export the car again. Alright, so now when we refresh. So this is one of the problems that you might find, is that now the sticker is the default colour. But so is the area around it, because for example, my number in a race could be anything from 1, which will take up very little room, to 64, which is going to take a massive amount of room. So what I like to try and do is try and find a compromise, a part of my design. Basically, the number will look good as long as it's against the same background as what you want the number to be, for example. So if I wanted that chrome 
metallic number, then that would have been fine because the area around it is chroma metallic. If I want the number to be matte, then that's fine. As long as the area around it is also matte. So if I make this all one colour again, If I wanted the number to be matte, then that's fine. As long as the bodywork around it is also matte, then it, it doesn't look out of place. So that's one of the reasons why Trading Paints offer the upgraded membership. So that you can have a customised number spec map on top of a different spec map paint job underneath. So that's just something to bear in mind when you do have numbers like this on your car. So, how to cut out the layers like we're speaking about. So let's go back to that metallic, because I think it's the easiest to see what we're actually doing. Well, that was the spec map again. Refresh the paint, so we're back to metallic. So, in particular, these numbers on the back here, I want them to be the default iRacing sticker colour number. So the first thing is if you're working on a car that you don't really know, is to find where that actually exists in, in the paint file itself. So, it's in the paintable area, you can see the both here. Pro 1, and, uh, Pro 2 and Pro 2 upside down sort of thing. So what we're going to do, is we'll highlight them. And the green section, remember, in the mask, anything outside of the green section isn't actually going to be on the car, if that makes sense. So you've sort of got a little bit of a border um, that you can work around. You can do a little bit of overspray and it wouldn't sort of matter. So let's grab that box there. And we'll do the same thing down here. Just holding shift so that it keeps both of them. So now if we zoom out, I've got both of those, um, those sticker boxes are selected. But we know we're working on the spec map, so let's hide the actual um, the paint layer. Go back to our spec map and turn the wire off. We know that the default colour, make default spec map, is black. So I'm just going to make sure in both my metallic layer, And my roughness layer. You won't be able to see it on the actual screen, but you can see it on the preview down there. They're both now black. So that should be ignored on both its layers by iRacing. And then when we refresh spec map, see that's gone back to its standard default number spec, whilst the rest of the car has stayed in the chrome. So let's have a go at this general tyre sticker. So I believe this is in, yeah, it's in the paint layer again. So there's a couple of ways you can go about trying to um, trying to select this. In GIMP, you've got the uh, the fuzzy select, and you can play about with the threshold to try and make sure it gets every single pixel. Quite hard to do. That seems to be a decent job. Let's go for maybe one more. Okay, let's go for that. So selected each one of the letters. Logo itself, and we'll even try and pick up this TM and see how that goes. And then just the same as before, we'll jump back into the actual spec map layer because that's what we're trying to influence. Grab our paintbrush in black. And because we're only painting in chrome, I'm actually just going to turn this green layer off. I'm just going to make it um, completely un invisible because we're not using that right now. So now when I export that, back into iRacing and refresh, now you can see we've got the default sticker 
kind of reflectivity and smoothness whilst the car is still chrome and you can see the difference in that versus this one which we haven't done yet see how that's still in the kind of chrome effect whereas that one on the top is still in the kind of sticker layer so when i was selecting the general tire logo just then i was quite particular with the way that the fuzzy selector was working i wanted to make sure that we had absolutely all of those um, kind of pixels selected and i'll show you what happens if you don't do that So you can see now we're not quite we're not quite to the outside of um, of the letter and just to really over -ex uh, over exaggerate this or overemphasize it I'm actually going to purposely shrink the selection just a little bit all right but then same as before we'll go into the paint layer Paint it just like we did before, so this, um, just like before we're trying to make this to the default specification for this logo. But now when we refresh, what we should find is it's got this weird halo around it. So that's just one example where it's quite important to be very um, kind of precise and make sure that you get, get the selection of a paint logo matched also in the spec map. So what we're actually looking at here is these bits that are showing up a little bit more blue is the chrome. It's the chrome effect that's not it's not being ignored by the spec map file anymore. Whereas the the white, the plain white, has been ignored by the spec map. That's by the spec map. That's the proper sticker texture. The blue kind of halo around the outside is still receiving kind of the chrome information. Trying to turn the camera so that you can um, kind of see that properly. So yeah, so that's just one thing to be careful about when you are playing around with the stickers or any logos and stuff like that in this spec map. So another little effect that we could play around with while we're here is let's start combining the chrome and the matte for the stickers themselves so let's paint the car fully matte so i'm going to um i'm going to combine the layers for this because i think it's going to make it easier to work with so a fully matte car we know is full green paint that up and export it so we're back to matte except for the numbers at the back here which is still cut out from before all right so that's fine so now let's make all the general tire stickers actually a chrome effect so i'll turn the spec map off so i can see the actual uh, paint layer itself and then just like we did before I'll increase the threshold. I think it was about 130 that made it to uh, select well. Yeah, let's go for that. So selecting each one of the letters here. Select the logo well as well. Good. And then while I'm here, I'll try and see if it'll let me do this one as well. Looks to be working quite well. Cool. So we've got our selection. I know I've not done the one at the other side just yet, but we've got our selection. We need to go back into the spec map now. And I said, let's try and get these stickers to be chrome. So red channel rather than green channel. We're not doing any of the blending that we looked at before or anything like that. Export this. Refresh it. Boom. So there we go. Now our stickers have got this nice shiny chrome effect. Whereas the rest of the car is still really matte. 
Now you can see a little bit of that halo in that I said about before. So it's not quite gone perfectly there. Now when this happens it's sort of a little bit of uh, trial and error. I can't sort of I can't tell if that's that the letters aren't selected enough or if they were selected a little bit too much. So I think looking at it, it probably just wasn't selected enough. So I can either try and shift click, which isn't really working, that's just cancelling my selection. So what I could do instead is I could try and grow the selection by just one pixel and see how that goes on the spec map. But what I imagine with this is now it's gonna be it's gonna be the opposite. It's gonna look it's gonna be too much sort of overspray is what I expect to happen. So again we'll export that. Do a refresh. So it's been a little bit it's gone a little bit better now at the bottom of the letters. But now around the inside of the letters it's sort of got the uh, got the opposite effect. It's it's oversprayed, it's gone too much. So I'm not going to sit here in this sort of uh, tutorial example video and go through but what's nice about these spec maps is that you've got literally pixel control so you can see here for example in between the E and the R there's probably one pixel's width of too much um, sort of spec mapping if you like. So if I turn that back to the matte colour, I'll just do this one really quick as an example Turn the pencil so I just get one pixel. And just really carefully. And just paint out those little bits. Export that to have a look. Alright, so you can see I've still gone a little bit too far in some places, but, you know, it's it's getting there. And that's the kind of um, sort of trial and error that you're going to need to use when, when you're trying to um, do more intricate things with the spec map like this. That's just really quick, just so I can um, finish. So that was a bit better on the E there. So it could be good to work with the two colours like that and just use the X, the letter X on your keyboard, shortcut to swap those around as you're working. So lots of shortcuts going on when you're doing uh, these paint files like this, just help to speed your workflow up just a little bit more. So that, that's almost there, it's, um, it's looking pretty good and I think if you, if you are out from a distance that's probably... Yeah, so on the side of the letter E that's, uh, that's pretty perfect. So. Just sort of taking the, the time, paying the attention to little bits like that is what's going to make your paint scheme when using these spec maps um, look that much better than if you sort of do half a job. So I think we're coming up close to um, sort of where I'm going to leave this video for now. Uh, on the actual recording file, I don't know how long the video itself is going to end up being, but um, I've been recording for nearly an hour so far, so just about done with talking. but. Just really quickly I'll show you an example. With these layers merged like what we've spoken about, I'm just going to show you what each of the colours that we've spoken about shows up as on the car. So let's just use the the bonnet or the hood just to go over it again really quick. So black across both layers. I've already spoken about it but I'll recap as we go through. So black will be ignored by everything. That will be iRacing's default colour. We go for red, and again I'll show you what this looks like after I've finished. We'll uh, go back onto iRacing and refresh it. Red is going to be full metallic, green is going to be full matte. Make those middle ones a little bit smaller. Then on the outside, we've got of this lime green which was sort of full roughness with a hint of metallic flaking and then just next to that we'll do the orange which was 
there. Got a metallic flake in with a hint of roughness. These two are going to look very different, especially next to each other. Export that. Spin the car around. Refresh. And remember to turn the wires off. <laughs> Oops. So. They can see the layers side by side. Remember, this is completely ignored by iRacing. This is default kind of reflectivity spec sort of thing. So you can see the sun now, so you can sort of see the reflectivity of it. So on the far right hand side as we're looking at it, or driver's left, was our black section in the spec map. So ignored by iRacing, default colour. You can see just like a normal car would, there's a little bit of reflectivity from the sun. And as we move along, this is fully metallic, this kind of browny colour as it's showing up on the screen. That is full metallic. That is no roughness. Just for that one, the roughness layer is turned off completely. That is what full kind of chrome metallic orange looks like. All right. Next one along is matte orange. That was this color here. So that was no, no metallic whatsoever. That was sort of the, uh, the green green color. So this color here, completely matte. Then next to it, we've got this sort of lime green color, which was mostly rough with a little bit of, um, of metal flaking in it. You can see it's showing up still mostly matte. It's just a little bit darker. Then at the far side is mostly metallic with a little bit of rough. So this sort of reminds me of... Um, I don't know how, how international they are, but sort of like a a um, like a, a Bakewell tart kind of wrapper. So it's metallic, but it's also rough, so it's kind of like a shiny rough kind of texture. Quite hard to describe really. This incidentally, the um, the blue on the Alpine livery this year is this kind of a texture. So if you're trying to do anything with the Alpine livery, you're gonna want this kind of orangey colour if you've got your spec map layers merged. I just remembered while we're talking about this that there was kind of that um, slightly shinier colour that we used, wasn't there as well? That was as we reduced the roughness. Kind of got, it's almost towards the brown colour. That was sort of a 50-50 a kind of colour instead. And you can just see the varying levels of um, reflectivity there in the in the colours. So we've got we've got full metallic with half roughness there. We've got full roughness with half metallic, and then a half and half gives this um, this colour here, or this uh, reflectivity level. But it's an interesting interesting kind of toss up between this one on uh, driver's right here and this one right at the front. They're both kind of quite similar, but the metallic spec, spec map seems to add darkness to the colours as well. So like here you can see the um, the full metallic layer is quite dark. Metallic with a bit of rough is a little bit lighter, but it's still dark compared to the two matte versions. So just before we wrap it up, there's a couple more things I'll go through. Um, one, we'll paint the entire car in each of these shades, just so you can see how it looks on an entire car. But just before we do that, something I kind of stumbled on by mistake when I was preparing for this video. So if you delete all the information out of the metallic and roughness channel, and then do the same thing out of this blue channel, which we've not touched before, and something really interesting happens, because this blue layer sort of works like... Uh, no sunlight is hitting this area kind of things. There's no, there's no roughness, there's no metallic, there's no sunlight whatsoever. So sort of like for holes in bodywork or something like that, that might be where the blue channel comes in. But if you paint the entire car in this colour, 
get this, you know there's that paint, there's like blacker than black paint. I can't remember the name of it now off the top of my head, but it's meant to be like the blackest paint in the world. Um, and that's sort of the effect that you end up with on here, sort of, you lose any any characteristics of the car, like you don't get any panel lines or anything like that. There's a gap in the line there obviously, but um, just sort of end up with this, this shadow car, which is kind of cool in its own way. Be a weird thing to see on track, that's for sure. Anyway, that was just like a little, um, something like I say that I uh, found by accident <laughs> when I was uh, preparing for this, for this video. But uh, if you want, um, if you want a Shadow Realm car, that's how you do it. But yeah, really quick, let's go through and we'll paint the car in each of these colours. So I just want to make sure that I add them to to the palette really quick. So they're easy to find. Cool. So, for the sake of this, let's repaint these um, these sections into one color. We'll keep those numbers on the back as um, ignored by the spec map, so they show up normally. And let's actually change the colour of the car. Let's do a bit of a split tone. Um, so let's, well, let's go for a triple. So we'll keep the orange for kind of the middle, middle third of the car. On driver's left of the car. Let's go for white. Not sure what that section up at the top left is there that I've uh, just oversprayed onto it a little bit, but I'm sure we'll find out once we get back to the car. And on this uh, driver's right of the car, let's paint that back. Again, there might be a few uh, crazy bits of overspray on the paint job here. Turn the mask off and export this as the car. And just as we go through this, I will actually just delete the spec map to begin with. So if we didn't play about with the spec maps whatsoever, if that was just our paint job, this is what the car looks like. This is iRacing's default colour scheme. Oh, sorry. Um, spec map scheme. This is just kind of your basic car off the street but with three stripes down it. I'm gonna have to paint those otherwise they're gonna annoy me. <laughs> so that's our car. Default spec map with the three colours down it. Alright so number one test we'll do. Back into GIMP. Turn the spec map on and We'll export as the spec once more. Let's go for, seeing as it's selected already, um, let's go for the green, let's go for fully rough. So this is the matte effect. Refresh that. So here's your matte car. Like I say, this is one of my favourites for my cars. All right, let's go the opposite way. Let's go fully red. We know from earlier in the video, this is a fully metallic car. So white, white paint, when made metallic, actually turns into that mirror chrome look. Black turns into sort of a black chrome or a really shiny black color. The orange just gets uh, sort of a lot darker, but it's still got its orange hue in there. My Skippy at the minute has got some um, sort of blue chrome on it. It's a weird one with this though because it's got, um, I've used like a blue chrome but then matte black. And it makes the chrome sort of just look like, like a foil, uh, I don't know how to explain, just like a, a foil sticker over the car. It doesn't look like chrome, so use that one with caution. It uh, 
It's not my favourite piece of work at the minute. But that's the chrome effect. All right, and now jumping into these uh, these ones in the palette that were saved. So orange. So fully metallic with half roughness. Brush that. And I think this might be my new uh, my new favourite spec map to be honest. Kind of like a, a brushed metal or brushed aluminium kind of effect, or aluminium depending on where you where you're watching from. But especially this this white. The white paint colour with this spec map. Really interesting kind of futuristic kind of colour there. That is what the combined layers in orange look like. What we got next? Let's go for... This sort of lime greeny. So remember this was full roughness, half metallic. It's sort of like a the matte, but not quite as matte. You can tell the white's not like a brilliant white anymore. It's got just a, a hint of reflectivity in there. Quite hard to actually see on the screen, I think. Although I do like the way that the black turned out in this, the actual black colour on this side. It's quite nice. And then last but not least, this sort of brownie, brownie kind of colour, which is half and half, which in my opinion worked a little bit better than the colour that we've just seen. Let's refresh that. This is a bit more like a shiny matte kind of thing. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, hopefully this wasn't the kind of tutorial that's raised more questions than it has kind of answered any questions. Um, but if you do have any questions, then please drop them below. And um, sort of if there's enough, then I'll make a part two for this if need be. But yeah, hopefully this has helped someone out somewhere. Um, like I say, I'm no graphic designer, definitely, but kind of knowledge is power. So hopefully by using this kind of information, um, I'll be able to see some fantastic designs that I could never even dream of making. <laughs> um, but yeah, sort of. It was quite interesting when I was um, doing the prep for this video, sort of discovering those mixes of the layers and how, how they actually work on the car. I have no doubt there can be some absolutely incredible designs out there, so I look forward to seeing those. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, if it's been helpful, please drop it a thumbs up. It uh, really helps the channel out and consider subscribing for more racing content if you want to see that. And like I say, any subsequent part twos and threes of this um, tutorial, if and when the time comes. But other than that, take it easy and look after yourselves and I'll catch you in the next one.